excited to worship with you guys this morning. Let's sing it out together. And I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. Breathe in the night alive. 
till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name I'm so excited that we continue to get to continue to worship together, even though it's online. We miss you guys and we love you, but we hope you sing out with us on this next song called Good, Good Father. I've heard a thousand stories of what And that I'm never alone You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am, it's who I am. Good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. cause you are perfect in all of your ways, you are 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. Whoa, you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that we continue, that we can continue to still worship you despite what's going on. Father, we pray that you would just be with our country. We love you, and we ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to our online services here at Granbury Baptist Church. We also have another option if you're in the area. We've been meeting uh, last Sunday. was our first time to meet on Easter outside in our kind of our car service at the high school. We're meeting there again this Sunday. Uh, on the, the airport uh, road side of the, the high school. So if you're in the area, we welcome you to, uh, you're, you're welcome to join us here online again or 1030 uh, at the high school if you're in the area. Last Sunday, we celebrated Easter together. It was so encouraging, exciting to see everybody uh, face to face, even though it was from a distance. Uh, the Lord gave us a beautiful day, beautiful weather, and we just got to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. I hope you had a wonderful Easter last Sunday. And uh, once again, we just encourage you today to engage in the service and worship the Lord and learn about Him and uh, just participate today wherever you are. Uh, we're grateful uh, that you're tuning in today. Please feel free to send messages and comments and let us know how we can serve you, encourage you. Uh, the Lord is doing great things through the midst of the challenges that we're having financially and as a country and as a world and uh, just physically all the challenges that the enemy brings our way, tries to curse and destroy and discourage, uh, the church of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped. And so we are so grateful for what God's doing here and around the world because of your generosity, because of your giving, uh, because of God's grace. Uh, the work of the ministry here at Granbury Baptist Church is alive and well and flourishing, and uh, we just want to praise the Lord for that and, and thank you for uh, what you're doing to pray for our services and your generosity. And, and once again, as we uh, prepare for our offering, uh, we are thankful, but if, if you're not a regular attender or member of, of our church, we, we never ask you to give. But uh, for those who are part of our church family, thank you for your generosity uh, our building is still going up. Our parking lot's almost finished. Uh, we're still feeding hungry children all over the world. We're still in the, in the process of establishing churches and doing ministry here in Granbury and Texas. And uh, so many wonderful things are happening. The Lord's been so good to us. And so we, again, say thank you, whether you give online or texting or dropping it off at the church or at the First National Bank. Uh, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ will continue, and it is, is flourishing, and the enemy cannot stop that. So uh, we welcome you to our services today. I hope you look forward to hearing from God's Word. Um, 
just thank you for all that you do for uh, our church and if those of you who pray and support. And if there's something we can do for you, please let us know if we can pray for you, encourage you, serve you. Uh, we're here to celebrate the Lord and make a difference and help you through a very, very difficult time. I know it's very, very hard for some people, and we want to be an encouragement to you. So let's ask the Lord to bless our service and to bless our offering. And uh, let's just uh, rejoice in him again today. This is the day he made, and we are excited about it. Father, we love you. Thank you for being so generous to us, so good to us, so kind, so gracious, so compassionate. Thank you that we got to celebrate the resurrection of your son last Sunday. We celebrate it again today. Uh, we celebrate it every day, the new life, the freedom, the victory we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you that this isn't our home. We look forward to being with you someday. Thank you, Jesus, for preparing a place for us. Until then, help us to introduce as many people to you as possible and develop passionate followers of you. Help us to be faithful to run our course, to fight our fight to the very end. Thank you, Jesus, that you are faithful that you finished the work your father gave you. Help us to be like you. Help us to finish the work, run our, run our race all the way to the end faithfully. Uh, father, we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. May these offerings please you, and may this service please you. We love you, we need you, and we honor you, and we worship you again today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lonnie. Well, thank you for being with us, as he said already. I'm excited to talk today about what really happened after Easter. So if I were going to title this message today, there's several things I would really want to say. I, I almost titled it, Oh, Come, Let Us Adore Him, uh, a phrase and a song that we sing at Christmas. Because as we celebrated last week, Jesus came and he lived a perfect, sinless life. And then he went to the cross of Calvary and he was a sacrifice for us. And then as we celebrated, and man, what an amazing week it was last week, he rose from the dead. If you were with us last Sunday in person, it was so much fun. And we pulled a, a trailer out at the backside of the high school and put a sound system up and then cars just kept coming. And it was so amazing to see families and people I haven't seen. And even some of you I haven't seen uh, before. So thank you for worshiping with us. And sometimes people, we would think, man, Easter is literally the highlight of our year because we celebrate all year long. And what do you do next? So maybe that's what I'll say the title of, of the message is today. So what do we do next? What happened 2,000 years ago after Easter and how does that apply to my life today? What, what happened the week after, the day after, maybe even the day of? Well, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm very excited today to know that God is with us. And if you want to go back in your mind's eye, maybe you're like me and you got to create kind of a picture, uh, a, a word picture in your brain. And if you can imagine the setting of what we studied last week. Jesus came, and, I, and we remember, he went to the cross of Calvary, and then we talked about last uh, Friday from noon to three o'clock. It was dark all across the face of the earth, and Jesus had the sins of the world, my sins, your sins, the world's sins on his shoulders. And then, uh, as we remember and we celebrated, on that third day, he rose again, and when he rose again, we talked about how uh, ladies came to the tomb and they were going to anoint him and be there. And, and the angel said, hey, he's not here. He's alive. He's gone. And all those prophecies were fulfilled. And then we basically just saw that, that he left and we left the story there. Well, today in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 21, uh, just in these just a couple of verses, uh, really, really, uh, have, have a lot to say that I'm going to say uh, in just a, a few minutes uh, for your sake and my sake, right? Lord willing. Uh, let me ask you a question first. Pause just for a second. Can you remember times as a child uh, looking at your mom or your dad's hands? Can you remember uh, maybe your grandparents' hands? Can you go back in your mind's eye just a little bit and think about what it was like maybe watching your dad drive or your mom prepare a meal or something with their hands. And if you remember even looking at their hands, 
uh, I don't know about you, but I have things in my mind that come back. I can think of my mom. And uh, if she's sitting, she's either knitting, crocheting, sewing. She was making a dress. She was doing something for someone, him in someone's pants. But almost always when I would come in the house, if mom was the setting, she would be using her hands doing something. And then in the house I grew up in, you could look through the living room and I'd see her. Maybe she was in there cooking or, or cleaning. Or I can remember times when I was a little kid, her nursing my wounds and watching her beautiful, delicate hands uh, care for me and my brother and sister. And, and, and now, even fast forward all these years later, my kids uh, watching her hands minister to and take care of, of my kids. Two of my boys have had surgeries and she would clean the, the wound and she would put things on and her hands stand out to me. Even now, I saw her hands the other day, and, and I know it may sound crazy to some of you, but if, if you can relate to me a little bit, your mom's hands, if you got to be around them and saw, or maybe your grandmother or whoever took care of you, those are pretty precious. I can think of moments of my dad's hands. Uh, my dad's hands were, were uh, doing a lot of things. He, he worked with his hands, and I can remember even times of my dad driving with his hands. We had an old 68 Mustang and sometimes he would help me uh, change gears as he was teaching me how to learn with his hands. I can remember my dad sitting in church opening the Bible and I would watch his super strong hands hold the mighty word of God. Uh, my dad was a man enough. I can remember as a little boy even holding my dad's hands and at times I would even pinch my dad's fingers and I don't know why I did that. Uh, I'd also pinch people's ears, and I would call it green sugar. <laughs> I'm not real sure why I did that. But whatever the case, hands and my dad's hands. Can I just read just some scripture today of post-resurrection of Jesus? And why would I talk about hands and what in the world? Where am I getting? Well, let me just read a couple of scripture verses to you, knowing the setting that Jesus rose from the dead. And then the ladies came to anoint him, and he was gone, and, and then he appeared to the disciples. Well, let's pick up there, John chapter 20, verse number 19, uh, where uh, it says, Then the same day at the evening, so that very day, the first day of the week, uh, being the first day of the week, when the doors were, op were, were shut behind, the disciples were assembled. And uh, it, they, were, they were assembled, they were in a room, and the door was shut because they were afraid. The Bible says they were afraid of, of many of the Jews and the Jewish, the religious people who didn't like what uh, they stood for and what they were doing. It says, Jesus came and stood in the midst. So he rose from the dead. He'd been on the cross. He was in the grave. He rose from the dead. And he stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands. And then so personal, I've never thought about it till yesterday, from such a personal level, Jesus showed them his side. He, he, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples that were in a room and the door was shut because they were afraid. And the Messiah, the risen Savior, walks in and, and, and he just says, peace be with you. And then he says, hey, look. I, I, I'm the same one that you walked with. Look at my hands. And look where that sword pierced my side. I told you it would happen. I told you that it was, they weren't going to hold me. That the, that the grave wouldn't hold me. And, he, and, he, and when I thought of this thought of his hands, and, and going back there in my mind's eye, can you imagine what that might have been like? And, and then he said to, to them after he showed them his hands inside, then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And then he said again in verse number 21, he says, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. So thinking about that very occurrence, can you imagine being in this room and you're afraid and, and, and you, had, you were Jesus' boys, you had, you had been with him, the disciples of Christ, you had left your job and you had followed him in his earthly ministry and even though he taught and he said that things were going to happen, I can imagine humanly speaking these guys were, they were men just like us, people just like us and, and then 
all of a sudden, he does what he said he's going to do. He raises, he, he's, he's raised from the grave. He's no longer dead. He's alive and well. And he physically walks in the room and he says, peace. Because I can imagine they're afraid. And he wouldn't have said peace if they didn't have turmoil and anxiety. And, and I just want to, we'll apply that in a second. And then he shows them his amazingly powerful but precious hands. And, and in his side, and then he says, hey, it's okay. He says it again, peace be with you. So, so what do we do the week after Easter? What do we do 2,000 years later? What do we do when there's a virus that's spreading that we still don't know anything really about? We know things about it, but how long is it going to last? What are we going to do? What's the economy going to look like? What is this going to happen with me and my husband and my wife and my grandparents and my kids? And all these questions. Well, today, there's a couple of quick things I think we can learn that jumped out at me at this scripture that I think will apply to you today. I hope... Uh, God will give you this very first thing. Number one, the thing that jumped out at me, he said, it says, peace be with you. And he just says, peace to you. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right now, you probably just felt such comfort to hear those words that today, 2,000 years later, because Jesus is still alive, he's still well. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now in heaven on the throne. This pandemic does not scare him and he says to you today that are struggling with anxiety and the what ifs and maybe depression and fear and loss of loved ones and what peace be to you we can have peace we can remember to know we can have peace to know that he is on the throne and he is with us today and everything is going to be okay. Uh, maybe you have a high level of anxiety right now. Maybe you have some genuine concerns we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's, there's some common questions that, that maybe you and I have today. Well, I just want to let you know he's alive. Jesus rose from the dead. He's okay. And you can have peace today. You can have peace. You can know that even though we don't understand what's next, he does. He loves you. I know so many of us struggle with the, oh no, what's next? Let him, let him grow your faith today. Let him comfort you today. He, he, he's not scared and we're with him so we can have peace. We can have peace. I can think of many times in my life. One time in particular, I was in uh, Baptist Bible College and, and uh, I'd gotten in some trouble. I'd done something stupid and, and I just heard that I wasn't, uh, you know, there were repercussions from what I did that was dumb. Uh, not immoral, it was just stupid. And, and I was embarrassed and, and I was also like, man, I'm studying to be, you know, in the ministry somehow and I get in trouble at Bible College and, and I was traveling singing at the time and I was in Oklahoma and I remember thinking, you know, what am I going to say to my mom and dad? And, and I had such a great group of parents. And how am I going to tell them, you know, the stupid thing I did? And uh, we went to go sing at a church. And, and my mom and dad lived a long way away. But I was playing basketball in the gym on a Saturday night before that Sunday morning we were going to sing and try to minister. And all this stuff was on my mind. And I was turning to literally to make a shot and the door was open to the gym in some church in Oklahoma and I look through the door and lo and behold I see my mom and dad's car it was their car it was an old Ford LTD looked like a cop car from back in the day and I look out and I'm like is that my mom and dad's car they didn't tell me they were coming I dropped the basketball I ran out the front door and they were pulling out of the parking lot they were just seeing where the church was they were going to surprise me the next morning but God knew that I needed to see my mom and dad I needed to confess to them and I needed just my mom and dad and sure enough I ran across the parking lot and I banged on the back and sure enough my dad stopped and they parked the car and I got out and hugged my mom and dad and said what in the world and they said we wanted to surprise you well long story short I talked to the guy who's leading I said hey I'm going to stay with my mom and dad tonight and I got in the back of the car and it was amazing I went from being an adult to a little kid who felt safe all over again because I was able just to say hey this is what I did I'm sorry my mom and dad with such wisdom and love they comforted me and it was amazing how well I slept that night because I knew I was with my mom and dad and even though I had messed up and I was flawed and I thought man what are they going to say they showed godly love and they said, Lonnie, you know not to do that again, but we love you. You're going to be okay. Can I just tell you today, because Jesus rose from the grave, and just the same peace that he told the disciples, 
even though you've blown it, I've blown it, we've acted a fool, <laughs> if I could use the slang. He just says, peace be with you today. Peace. What's the last thing I think we should say? Well, if you're a kid, maybe you, you ever heard the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. You remember the song? Maybe you're singing it right now. We could do a remix. He's got the whole world or the beatbox version. <laughs> He's got the whole, I don't know what version you want to go with, but he's got the whole world in his hands. And the same Jesus that came and talked to the disciples and he said, peace be with you. He also showed them his hands and feet. And if you can imagine how personal that was, how amazing that was for the disciples who were afraid and in a room and the door was shut and all of a sudden he said, hey, it's me. It's the same me. But look at these hands. Is that not awesome? I was just looking up, even this morning, preparing for this, about different things that the Bible says that he did with his hands. In verse 20, he said he showed him his hands. In Acts chapter 7, verse number 50, he says, Was not in my hands which made all these things? The very hands of God? Psalm 8, 3. It says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your hands. Psalm 95, 5. He says, The sea is life for it was he who made it and his hands formed the dry land it says also in psalm 31 15 it says many times are your hands delivered me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me can i just encourage you today when we think of so what's next so what do we do now we celebrated easter i'm still in quarantine i'm still in the house and he says peace to you he, he just says man these hands these hands, I'm in charge, I'm in control. These same hands that are gentle and loving that he says in the scripture, let the little children come unto me. These same hands that, that, that I can't wait to touch. I was thinking yesterday as I was studying this, can you imagine how wonderful it's going to be the day we get to maybe put our hand in his hand when we get to see him in heaven? Or even yet, what will it feel like when he wraps his loving arms around us? When we get to see him face to face and to know it's those same hands that he died on the cross of Calvary that loves us and embraces us and cares. Listen, it's going to be okay because he's got the whole world in his hands. He, the, the one verse that says that he's got you and me, brother in his hands and it goes on why it's so wonderful to know that he's still on the throne and it's okay and we still have a job to do and there's still so many people to tell and with these very hands my hands I don't know if you can see I've got a few cuts and calluses and I've cut some trees and I've worked for some people and trying to bless people in this time I don't have a lot of skill but there's a lot of way with our very hands that we can bless people right now some of you are making masks some of you are making meals some of you are serving other people there's a lot of things we can do right now with these hands because we can have peace because we know he's still in charge and that he's not afraid man let's get busy with our hands i want to close by saying this my hands don't look quite like they used to i was looking down the other day thinking about my hands thinking about man my skin doesn't look the same as it used to look and that tight skin of my hands has turned into not till time 50 years old and I think about I only have how much time do I have before I get to see my savior face to face you know what I want to use these hands and what God has given me to do what he wants me to do maybe you're here watching today and you say man I know Jesus but I've done some terrible things well he can forgive he, he can forgive. The Bible says if we are one of his children, there's nothing that can separate us from his love. Nothing, First John says, can pluck us from his hands. But let me tell you something. First John 1, 9 says we should confess our sin. And if we do, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us. Maybe you're here today and you know him, but you're really ashamed like I was of when I was given the example of my mom and dad and many, many other times that I had to confess to friends and to God. Listen, he can forgive. And, and let's ask forgiveness and say, God, I'm ready to be your hands and feet in this time where people really need to know it's going to be okay. I was at a place today and I was getting a chainsaw for my chain and same place I went the other day to get some blades for my mower. And the lady said, what do you do? You seem so calm. And I was so glad <laughs> that maybe what was in the inside didn't come out. And I said, ma'am, I, I, I'm a guy I get to tell the good news all the time. I said, I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. I said, but why I'm so calm is I have peace to know 
it's going to be okay. There's so many things that God can use us for. Just know that, that he wants to use a clean vessel. I'm praying for revival. Let's pray that, that he'll put our hands to work, believers. And let me just talk to you as we close. Those of you that are listening, maybe you've never liked, maybe you've never commented, maybe you don't even want people to know. But you know that you've never accepted Jesus. And I said it last week, and it sounded kind of harsh, and I don't want to sound harsh, but I said last week, there are reasons that you might want to be scared because what happens if you were to die right now not knowing Jesus? Well, the Bible says if you don't know Jesus, if we reject the gift of Jesus when God sent Jesus, then that's the only thing that would send us to hell. And I don't want you to go there. Would you accept him today? Would, do you want to know that peace that the Bible talks about here? and that I have experienced in my, do you want to know it? You can accept him today. You can know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Say, God, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus came and lived and died and was buried and rose again. And I confess my sin. Come into my life and save me, Lord Jesus. You can know him as your Lord and Savior. You can begin a relationship with him and you can have peace. And you can have the confidence to know that even though I don't know what's going to happen next, it's all in his hands. Man, what do we do next? Well, we trust him. We cast all our cares on him for he cares for us. Isn't that good news? I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God's word spoke to me this week. I hope it spoke to you. I want to encourage you today as I pray for you. Man, if you don't know Jesus, if you want us to pray with you, man, please text or comment below or, or uh, maybe you've accepted Jesus. Uh, will you just do this in the comment section? You don't have to say anything else. We won't hound you. Will you just say, I did it. I, I, I did it. I'll know what you mean by that because I want to celebrate with you. And if you want further uh, information, I would love to show you what do you do next if you've accepted Jesus, maybe this week or the like before. But will you just text, I did it. Uh, and I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those of you today that may be sick. Some of you may be in your home. Let me pray real quick for you today as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that Easter was the beginning for us. Uh, those of us that know you as our Lord and Savior, because what you've done on the cross and because you conquered death, hell, and the grave, because you took the sins of the world on your shoulders, now we can have life and we can have peace in troubling times. We can have confidence to know that you're on the throne. Heavenly Father, you know my heart. You're the one that gave me this desire to want to tell my friends and some of these folks that don't know you yet, would, would you just pull their heart towards you today? Spirit of God, would you just reach in through this camera and would you grab the hearts of those people that haven't trusted you yet that may be saying, I don't understand it all. Please let them know they don't have to understand it all. You'll give them understanding once they accept you. Would they just pray right now and call on your name? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful, wonderful promise you give us in your word. Now, help us be your hands and feet, I pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. That's right. Hey, thank you for viewing this today. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We just want to let you know we're going to do everything we know to do to keep encouraging you. Every night we're going to post a video. We're, we've done some music. Uh, we're trying our best to encourage you in your homes. I uh, can't wait to see you face to face. But until then... What do we do now? Just know you can experience peace. You can pass on that peace. And let's use these hands to glorify God. Thank you for viewing today. May God bless you.